Hi, it's Kristen May, and for today's Fun Filled Friday, we are going to do a fun craft. We are going to make a paper plane that looks like a swallow-tailed kite, one of my favorite birds. Swallow-tailed kites are unmistakable because of their bold white and black feathers and their deeply forked tail. This forked tail is why they have the name swallowtail. You can find them here in the low country during the summer months soaring above our wooded wetlands. These raptors gracefully glide and barely need to flap their wings while they're soaring. They are incredible at maneuvering with twists of their unique tail. They are so agile that they can chase and catch dragonflies and also pluck frogs, lizards, and snakes from tree branches. They usually eat and even drink while still in flight. Swallowtailed kites come to a handful of southeastern states during the summertime to breed, nest in treetops, and lay their eggs. After raising their chicks, the kites migrate to South America to spend the winter. The swallowtailed kite is listed as endangered in South Carolina. Our public lands like the Francis Marion National Forest and a especially Waccamaw National Wildlife Refuge, manage land that is extremely important habitat to these kites. So let's celebrate the swallow-tailed kite by making our very own swallow-tailed kite paper airplane. My intern Alicia is much more artistic than myself and is going to make a swallow-tailed kite for you to follow along. All you'll need is a sheet of computer paper, a pair of scissors, and a little bit of patience. Take it away, Alicia. All right, let's get started. Grab your piece of paper and a pair of scissors. The first thing that we need to do is to make our paper a square. To do this, place your piece of paper horizontally or long ways, and then take the upper right corner of your paper and fold it down until it meets the bottom edge of your paper. Make sure that the edges of your paper line up along the bottom and then carefully fold so those edges stay lined up. Once you have made your first fold, you can run your fingers over it to make sure the crease is nice and flat. Next, we need to grab our scissors to remove our extra paper. Carefully cut along the entire edge of your folded paper. Make sure that you are cutting in a super straight line along the entire edge. Once you reach the, the end, end, you will be left with a triangle and a long rectangle scrap. We only need the triangle, so make sure you recycle the scrap rectangle. We are all done with our scissors, so you can go ahead and put those away. Now I want you to open up your brand new square. Now I want you to take the bottom edge of your square and fold it up to meet the top edge. You are folding your square in half to make a rectangle. Make sure you are keeping your edges exactly in line with each other and you are keeping those creases nice and clean. Go ahead and open your square again. We are going to fold it in half again, just like the last fold, but from the other side. When you open back up your square, it should have folds that look like a cross in the middle and one that goes from corner to corner. We still need to add the other corner to corner fold line. Fold your square corner to corner into a triangle, making sure you line up all of your edges and making sure you push down your fold to make a nice clean crease. When you reopen your square, you now have a square that folds four different ways. Go ahead and open back up your square, and now we're going to fold it down towards you to make a rectangle. Now I want you to pinch the center of your rectangle with your right hand, and with your left hand, pinch the inside of the top left corner. 
keeping your right hand at the center of your rectangle, begin pushing the top left corner inwards towards the bottom middle of your paper. As you push the top left corner down, allow the paper to briefly gape open. Once the top left corner has reached your right hand, the paper should have closed again. You just successfully created a triangle flap. Lay your new triangle flap down to the left and press down on all sides of this triangle. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Make sure your creases are very good and pushed down. Take a quick look at your computer screen to make sure your paper looks just like Alicia's. Now we need to make another triangle flap on the right side. So let's repeat those steps we just did. Pinch the center of your paper with your left hand, and with your right hand, pinch the inside top right corner. Push the inside of the top right corner inward to meet the bottom middle of your paper. Another successful triangle flap. Don't forget to press down all of your creases. You now have two flaps in the center of your paper. Our next step is to take the left flap and fold it down the middle so the long edge lines up with the center of your paper. Try to make sure that your creases and your lines are all lined up. You want nice folds and clean points. Now, do the same to the right flap. Fold the flap to the center. Check every single one of your creases. Your paper should now look like this. Now, from the center, I want you to take the long edge of the left flap and fold it in half to the left so that the edges line up to make a really skinny triangle. Make sure you have a really nice, neat point at the top, your edges line up, and your creases are good. Repeat this for the right flap. Line it up with its opposite edge to make that really skinny triangle. As always, check all of those creases. Your paper should now look like this. This next step is a little harder to explain, so make sure you watch the video closely. I want you to take the centermost edge of your left flap and slowly scoot it to the center of your paper. When the left edge meets the center of the paper, carefully press down your left flap making sure you have a really nice point at the top. You have just made a new crease in your left flap. Now do that exact same thing with the right flap. Scoot the center edge of the right flap to the center of your paper and make a new crease. Take a look to see if your paper matches Alicia's. You just made two new creases, so it's a good time to fix up all of your creases, making sure they are pressed down well and nice and neat. Our paper is finally starting to look a little bit like a swallow-tailed kite. Now I want you to take the left wing of your bird and fold the outside edge toward the new crease that you just made. When the edge meets the crease, fold it down really well. Keep an eye on your points at the top and make sure that your edges are lining up exactly. Repeat this step with the right wing. Fold that right wing edge towards your crease, line up the points and edges, and fold it down carefully. After fixing up your creases, 
your bird should now look like this. We've got a challenging fold coming up, so watch Alicia carefully. You are going to pull open the two center folds. Grab the middle crease and pull it outwards to invert this fold. Make sure you keep the tail feather folds intact. You should now have one big center flap sticking straight up that kind of looks like a shark fin. Crease both sides of your shark fin really well. Take a look at the video to make sure yours looks just like Alicia's. Now, I want you to take that big center flap, that shark fin, and open it up and flatten it. Make sure that you keep the bottom portion of your bird held together while you flatten the center flap evenly over the center of your bird. Check all of your creases. Make sure they're flat, smooth, and neat. Now we need to open up the left wing. Unfold the top of that left wing and let it lie flat. Next, use your left hand to open up the left wing. While you are opening it up, use your right hand to hold the two folds in the center of your bird that will eventually become the bird's body and tail. Hold on with your right hand and keep pulling that left wing out with your left hand. Once the left wing has been pulled out, make a new crease and flatten everything out. Take a look to see what your bird should now look like. On to the right wing, we are going to do the exact same thing. Unfold, open it up, hold on to the middle with your left hand, and pull the right wing out with your right hand. Then make that crease, flatten it out, and check to see how your bird compares to Alicia's. Now, I want you to fold the left wing so that the short edge all the way to the left aligns with the bottom of the wing. Once you have the short edge and the bottom aligned, Crease it down really well. Do the exact same thing with the right wing. Fold it so that short edge is aligned with the bottom. And then flatten that crease down. Reopen that left wing and then fold the top corner down so that the leftmost straight border lines up with the fold mark right next to it. As always, press that crease down really well. Make sure your points are lining up and look nice and neat. Take it on over to the right side. Open that right wing up and fold that top corner down to line up the outer edge to the fold line right next to it. Mind those points and creases. Now we are going to reclose our kite's wings. So first fold back in the left wing. And now do the same with the right wing. Next we are going to take the outermost edge of the left wing and fold it towards the center so that it lines up with the outside of the left fork of the tail. Grab the left wing and fold it in. Line it up exactly with the left side of your tail. Fold it down well, and now let's do the exact same thing with the right wing. 
Take the right side of your right wing and fold it towards the center so it lines up with the right side of your kite's tail. Once your creases are folded down well, your bird should now look like this. Next, we are going to make your swallow-tailed kite's head. Take the tippy-tippy top of the bird and fold it down to the horizontal line in the center. Make sure you crease down that new fold. Next, we are going to take this flap at its halfway point and fold it up so the tip hangs over the top edge. Make sure you watch carefully for this step. Take the left wing and hold the new head flap. Pull the left wing so that a fold slips out from under the head. And then flatten this new crease. Now repeat that again with the right wing. Hold the head, pull the wing, and flatten. Take a quick look to see what your bird should look like now. Double check all of your creases and then flip your bird over. Now I want you to fold your bird in half along the center crease from its tail all the way to its beak. This bird is on its way to looking pretty wild. Once again, Make sure all of your creases are nice and neat. Now we need to adjust the wings and make a place to grip our bird for when we want to let it fly. Do this by folding the wings so that the crease lines up with the head and the tail. Do this for both the left and the right wings. When you're folding the wings to make a grip, make sure the tail has this good grip space as well. We want the wings and the tail to line up so they will look flat when you hold your bird. As always, make sure to fix up those creases. Almost to the last step, we want to fold in those extra flaps towards the tail. Place your bird belly up and fold both these flaps in so they are hidden. We are finally at the last folding step, and that is to tidy up all your creases and your folds one more time. Now your bird should be ready for takeoff. Let's make our bird look a little more like a swallow-tailed kite. You will need a black marker and a brown or orange marker. Swallow-tailed kites have black feathers all over their back. But wait! Make sure you are coloring on a protected surface, like a newspaper or another scrap sheet of paper. Go ahead and color the entire back of your swallow-tailed kite. But make sure you leave the head blank because swallow-tailed kites have a white head. Now flip your kite over to color its tail and underside of its wings to look like a swallow-tailed kite. Take a look at Alicia's coloring and this picture of a swallow-tailed kite to know what you should be coloring in order to make your bird look just like a swallow-tailed kite does. Now cap your black marker and grab your brown or orange. This will be used to add the swallow-tailed kite's eyes. Hold your bird and place a dot on either side of its head. Cap your eye marker and pick back up your black marker to add the kite's beak tip. Color the very end of its beak with the black marker and then cap it. Your swallow-tailed kite is now complete.
How did your swallowtailed kite turn out? I bet it's absolutely beautiful. If you would like to see a swallowtailed kite flying overhead for yourself, visiting the Francis Marion or the Waccamaw National Wildlife Refuge are some of the best places to have a chance to catch a glimpse of one. If you do get lucky enough to see a kite for yourself, make sure you report it to the Center for Birds of Prey. Watching a kite gracefully soar above you is a sight you won't soon forget. Well, I hope you learned a lot and maybe had a little bit of fun. I'll see you next time. Stay wild.